implant rules to live by. Dentists love rules. We love to be taught by our mentors. We love to know what the rules are so that we know how to do our job. The issue that we have that we need to be concerned about is that the rules in themselves are useful, but it's oftentimes very important to understand where those rules come from. Because if you understand where they come from, it affords you the opportunity to break the rules. Okay, so let's follow this up with, let's start with Dennis Tarnow's rule. So Dennis Tarnow published the paper a number of years ago that almost everyone learns in dental school. You learn it in every course you go to. And that's the distance between two implants uh, side by side or an implant and a tooth. So everyone knows between two implants, it should be three millimeters. And between an implant and a tooth, it should be at a minimum of 1.5 millimeters. Now, what, what most people don't know is why, all right? And, and the why doesn't come down to a biological healing problem. It comes down to really a papillary fill problem. So if you read the original paper, what they did is they took two implants and they placed them. And this was back in the day. So these two implants were Brandemark looking implants. And so based on their implant design and their features, they usually lost about 1.5 to 2 millimeters of crustal bone. So that during the wound healing phase, they had a lot of cupping, okay? If you have two implants and they have cupping and they're far enough apart, the bone between the two implants doesn't change. The bone in between them doesn't change. If you move those two implants closer together, as those two implants get closer together, the cupping overlaps. And as the cupping overlaps, the crustal height in between the implants goes down. Well, this can be a significant problem in the aesthetic zone. If you don't have any bone support between two, let's say this to the two centrals, you don't have any bone support between the two centrals, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to have papillary fill, which means you're gonna have a long contact, your teeth are gonna look like horse teeth, right? And your blunted papilla, it looks terrible. So the idea was is that if you could keep these implants far enough apart, you wouldn't have overlap of the cupping and therefore you would have a better outcome aesthetically. It wasn't because two implants can't be that close together to heal in the bone. And this shocks people because they go, wait, wait, I thought I had to keep implants apart so they heal in the bone. Well, I can tell you firsthand that I've seen implants that have been interdigitated because they were inadvertently placed on top of each other that have been in the mouth for 20 years. Now, clearly case acceptance or, or case studies are the lowest level of evidence, but you've probably seen something quite similar yourself where you've seen implants that are touching or coming in close contact to each other and they don't seem to be a problem from an integration perspective. So the bone heals around the implants irrespective of that distance. Now, why, why is this important? Because without knowing this, I've had designers at laboratories tell me, I can't place the implants any closer together because they're currently at three millimeters for an all on X case. Now, for an all on X case where I'm doing an FP3, an FP3 would be I'm controlling for white and pink in the prostheses. I don't care about the bone level. I'm, I'm going to control for papillary height and perfect aesthetics in the prostheses irrespective of the bone level. So I don't mind implants being closer together if they need to be in order to, to solve the problem for the patient. So this shocks them because they go, well, no, it has to be three because otherwise the implants are too close together. I said, that Tarno's rule was not developed because the bone isn't going to heal around the implants. It was developed for aesthetics, predominantly two single implants in the aesthetic zone, okay? So you're right, between the centrals, like eight and nine. So why is this important? Because if we just carte blanche take a rule like Tarnow's rule, sometimes my designers will tell me, we can't solve the problem. I go, why can't we solve the problem? He said, well, the implants are going to be too close together. And I go, well, put them closer together. 
and they and they freak out, right? And then I have to explain to them where the rule comes from. So it's very, very important for all of the rules that you have in dentistry for you to at least understand their origins so that you know why you're doing what you're doing. It's very important. Uh, another rule is two millimeters away from like the inferior alveolar nerve, okay? So this is an, Im uh, an implant rule that we hear. Two millimeters away from the, in the inferior alveolar nerve. Why? Well, the literature is very clear on this. When you look at implants placed in the apical aspect of the implant is at least two millimeters away from the nerve as seen on the radiograph, the incidence of any sort of neurological issues is darn near zero. So as a factor of safety to keep yourself in a, in a safe zone for your patient, plan your cases where the apical aspect of the implant is at least two millimeters away from the nerve and you'll never have any sort of uh, neurological complications. So that's an important rule to understand is where it comes from is from a neurological issue, okay? Because sometimes if you're looking at a two-dimensional radiograph, it can look like your implant is engaging the nerve. Well, then when you look at it at a three-dimensional, the implant is l much further lingual than the, than, the, than the canal, and it's greater than two millimeters away the entire way down. It may f afford you the opportunity to engage bone below the nerve canal as shown on a two-dimensional radiograph, but you're still three millimeter or two millimeters away from any aspect of that nerve. So understanding where these rules come from are really, really important. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley. Follow for more.